Stop! You're blowing my mind! Another version. Yet another version. I can't. Look, they're everywhere. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crush them. Another version of that mimicry we love so much. How does it do it? How does it do it? How does it do it? Look at that. Growing in the sand, blending in with those little iron pebbles. Iron stone pebbles. So easy to miss. I'm probably I'm probably kneeling on some right now, am I? I hope not. No, I'm not. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. How does shit? Selection pressure. Huh? How does it do that? Selection pressure. This is Crassula pyramidalis, member of the succulent family Crassulaceae. And if you just saw this plant in some damn succulent boutique in a little cute container, you'd have no idea why it looked the way it did. You'd have no idea that this color and this form was a direct result of evolving in this habitat. Plants like this give us a wonderful example of how natural selection works. The same way that humans can breed 9,000 different types of tomatoes from a single ancestral species, or 900 breeds of dogs from a single species of wolf, the environment can breed species of plants that are the most suited to that particular environment that they are growing in. How could you see stuff like this and not have anything to say about it? I don't understand. Look at it. There's a seedling right there. How could you see stuff like this and not just be enamored with the world? How could you see stuff like this and not just be amazed at evolution and at life on planet Earth? Now, some people may ask, how does a plant know what the pieces of uh, these little iron pebbles look like in its habitat? It doesn't. It's just been growing here that long that any individuals that didn't come to look like this got picked off by herbivores or for whatever reason didn't make it. So that all you're left with are individuals and an entire population eventually that all come to resemble uh, this kind of habitat, these little iron pebbles growing on this, uh, this sand. They just blend in that well. The camouflage is that perfect. Vast amounts of time and many mutations and here you go. Just because our collective feeble primate brains can't grasp the concept at first, we can't zoom out far enough to look at how many eons it might take for this to evolve, doesn't make it not real. Okay, we can measure this. We can measure it genetically. We can measure it by looking at plant genomes. We can measure it by looking at allele frequencies and populations. Crassula pyramidalis is a wonderful example of plant evolution and natural selection. And more specifically, how environments, specific environments, which could be many factors, can affect the evolutionary trajectory of a plant species. Look at it. I mean, just first glance, you can't even see them. You look closer than they are. You know, I, I didn't know this was going to be out here when we were coming out this way. I had no idea this, this plant, this species existed. But I come out here and I see it and I can tell what's, what's been going on. I can tell that this plant is basically mimicking its environment. And that's how it avoids being gnawed on. That's how it gets by in this, uh, this drought-stressed environment where anything green is on the menu for herbivores. You know, I see why they have such a bad problem with poachers here. Because there's so much cool stuff. And humans are just, you know, they want to take everything. Mine! You know, but even if you had this in a pot, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be as exciting. You know, you can't take this home with you. You got to leave it here. Out of its habitat, out of its context, it doesn't mean anything. It's just another uh, little geometric plant. Another geometric crassula. Looks like so many of the other ones. But here, it makes sense. Here, you understand what it's doing. You understand the millions of years that are implied. The evolution that's implied. The ecology that's implied. I don't want the responsibility of caring for stuff anyway. <laughs> I just... And the killing it or fucking it up. There's our little orchid friend. Still got his little leaves with a hairy stem growing in the sand. Yeah, I don't know how you could want to take this home. Take it home. Take it home with you. The only reason it's cool is because it's here. 
All right, well, that's all I got for you tonight. Hopefully you got something out of that. If you didn't, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with you. But uh, anyway, enjoy the sun. Enjoy the sunset. Enjoy the vent effect. Have a good rest of your evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye.